Why did Ramakrishna Paramhansa get cancer? Was it past bad karma? This question often circulates on the internet. So in this video, we shall arrive at the correct answer. Hello everyone, I am Pulkit Mathur, founder of The Spiritual Bee. And as we know, Sri Ramakrishna Paramhansa, the great avatar and guru of Swami Vivekananda, became afflicted with throat cancer and gave up his body on 16th August 1886. He was just 50 years old. When people typically hear this, they wonder, how could an avatar and incarnation of God get cancer? Did he do some bad karma in his past life? And the answer is no, Sri Ramakrishna Paramhansa certainly did not do any bad karma in his past life. He actually could not have. For in his previous births too, he had incarnated as the avatars Lord Rama and Krishna. Sri Ramakrishna had himself revealed this truth to Swami Vivekananda. He who in the past was born as Rama and Krishna is now living in this very body as Ramakrishna. He had told Swami Vivekananda. Now an avatar being an incarnation of God is absolutely incapable of doing any bad karma. This in fact is one of the key attributes which distinguishes an avatar from an ordinary person. While an ordinary person remains trapped in Maya and is forced to be reborn again and again in order to work out their past karmas, an avatar is under no such compulsion. In some distant past lifetime, when an avatar like Sri Ramakrishna first attained to Samadhi, he had at that moment conquered Maya once and forever. At that instant of his first Samadhi, all of Sri Ramakrishna's karmas from each and every preceding past lifetime had been burnt up and permanently destroyed. From that point onwards, he became a free soul. The law of karma ceased to affect him completely. Instead of being a helpless slave of the law of karma like we ordinary mortals are, at that moment of his first samadhi, Sri Ramakrishna forever transcended the law of karma and became instead the ruler and master of it. Therefore, whenever an avatar like Sri Ramakrishna takes birth, it is not due to any forced compulsion of the law of karma. Rather, the avatar takes birth again and again out of his own choice, out of his own free will. An avatar chooses to reincarnate only out of compassion for the suffering humanity, motivated purely by the desire to help liberate others too from the karmic cycle of birth and death. Here it is important to note that apart from men, there have been many women avatars too. Thus, Sri Ramakrishna Paramhansa, being an avatar, was born free without any past karmic debt. In his present lifetime too, being an avatar, he did not commit any bad karma. So, Sri Ramakrishna could not have gotten cancer as the karmic repercussion of bad actions done in this or some other past lifetime. So, what then was the real reason why Sri Ramakrishna Paramhansa got cancer? Now, before we proceed to answer this question, one point worth highlighting here is that this idea that every person suffering from cancer or some other deadly disease is doing so because they have committed some bad deeds in their past lives, this idea itself is deeply wrong and flawed. Diseases as the sages tell us have many causes, one of which is past karma. Karma is merely one out of the innumerable possible causes. What's more, it is quite impossible for an ordinary person to determine whether the cause behind theirs or somebody else's cancer is truly past bad karma. In fact, whenever a person is going through bad times, it is not possible to know with certainty whether their suffering is necessarily due to their past bad karma. This is because the lines of karma of all past good and bad actions of a person are extremely complex and interwoven with one another. They are extremely difficult to trace and hence simplistic and linear conclusions cannot be drawn and should not be drawn. Such expertise is possessed by God-realized sages. They certainly have the power to untangle the entanglement and know for sure where the past bad karma is the cause. Such sages of course are rare. It is for this reason that the Bhagavad Gita has stated, Gehna Karmano Gati. The law of karma works in a deeply complex and indecipherable manner far beyond the comprehension of ordinary human beings and therefore we must not commit the mistake of drawing simplistic linkages and blame past karma for each and every bad thing that happens to us or to others. 
the difficulties of life in fact have many non-karmic causes. For example, it may be the case that the soul of a person has purposely charted out difficulties in its life plan so that the person can grow and manifest the divine qualities which lie latent within and thus hasten their ascendancy to the realm of God consciousness. In other words, the inner self of a person can purposely invite difficulties and use them as tools to quicken the pace of spiritual growth. When this happens, the individual himself will not be aware of this decision made by his inner subconscious self. Another example of life's difficult situations having non-karmic causes is when an individual becomes the victim of another person's evil thoughts and actions. When we are born on earth, we each take birth in a realm of deep ignorance where we and others around us are all ignorant of our true divine natures. Thus we go about committing numerous mistakes, acts of bad judgment and evil deeds. Living in this realm of ignorance, we can easily become the victims of another person's misdeeds. Consider for example the case of a farmer who is illiterate and who routinely sprays pesticides on his fruits. A pesticide company whose executives are all highly educated but morally weak these executives, blinded by the greed for profits, market their product aggressively to this illiterate farmer. The farmer being uneducated is not equipped with the knowledge to understand the harms caused by pesticide use. The government health officials too have taken bribes from the pesticide company and have consequently turned a blind eye to the scientific warnings of toxicity. As a result of all these moral lapses, some consumers after ingesting the pesticide laced fruits purchased from the farmer get cancer. Past karma then cannot be blamed for their contracting the disease because these individuals are in reality the victims of other people's bad judgment, ignorance, greed and immorality. Therefore it is very important for us to keep in mind that diseases and bad events in life have many causes and past karma is not always to be blamed. Furthermore, because the workings of the law of karma are extremely complex, therefore it is not possible for us to pinpoint and know for sure whether somebody's disease or ill luck is really due to their past bad karma. In fact, it is a good thing that the workings of the law of karma are hidden and secret. For if they become knowable to one and all, people would immediately lose their empathy and become hard-hearted and cold to the suffering of others. So next time you see a person suffering, don't immediately jump to thinking that karma is the cause. But remember the words of Sri Krishna from the Gita, Gehna Karmano Gati. The workings of the law of karma are mysterious and extremely complex and therefore simplistic linkages cannot and should not be drawn. Now returning back to Sri Ramakrishna Paramhansa, the question then arises that if past bad karma was not the reason why an avatar like him got cancer, what then was the real reason? Now Sri Ramakrishna has himself provided the answer to this question and it has been faithfully recorded by his direct disciple Swami Sardananda in his book Sri Ramakrishna the Great Master. In this book Swami Sardananda recounts an incident which took place after Sri Ramakrishna had contracted throat cancer. At that time Sri Ramakrishna had shifted from Dakshineshwar to a house in Calcutta for treatment when the sage had a profound vision. Sri Ramakrishna Paramhansa was strolling back and forth in his room one day when he suddenly saw his subtle body emerge out of his gross physical body. Sri Ramakrishna observed that his subtle body was covered with sores especially in the region of the throat. He was wondering at the cause of such sores when the Divine Mother of the Universe revealed to him that people who had committed various evil deeds had come to Sri Ramakrishna and had become pure by touching him. When people touched his feet, Sri Ramakrishna out of compassion for their sufferings had taken their sins upon himself and his body was now working out the results of the bad deeds of all these people. Therefore it had developed these sores. After narrating this vision to his disciples, Sri Ramakrishna pointed to his throat and said, That is why this cancer is there. Why otherwise should there be so much suffering though this body never did any wrong? So taking up the sins of others is the real reason why an avatar like Sri Ramakrishna became ill with cancer. Swami Sardananda recounts that when the disciples heard their Guru Sri Ramakrishna's words, 
they felt an immense amount of despair and sadness for they remembered all the times when they had touched sri ramakrishna's feet after committing various evil acts like lying cheating etc and the great sage all this while was silently absolving them of the karmic repercussions of their bad actions by absorbing their sins into himself swami sardananda particularly recalled one noteworthy incident which had happened once a man suffering from the skin disease of leucoderma begged sri ramakrishna that if only the sage would pass his hand over his body he would be cured of the disease sri ramakrishna out of compassion said as you desire i shall pass over my hand your disease will be cured if the divine mother wills and he passed his hand over the man's body for the whole of that day sri ramakrishna experienced excruciating pain in his hand sri ramakrishna said later the man was cured of the disease but the suffering was experienced by this body so this is how sri ramakrishna took other people's sins upon himself this phenomena of a guru absorbing other people's sins has been further explained by sri aurobindo another great sage and avatar one sri aurobindo's disciple nirod baran asked him it is said that ramakrishna paramhansa got cancer because of the sins of his disciples is this possible sri aurobindo replied the guru has to take up many things of the disciple there was a famous yogi who advised a disciple who was getting ready to become a guru the yogi said to the disciple in addition to your own difficulties you will now have to take up those of others so a genuine guru takes up some of the past karmas of his disciples in order to hasten their spiritual progress we must remember however that the guru of course does this only after determining the patrata or the worthiness of his disciple he does not bestow such boons willy-nilly and for free if you wish to understand this point better then do watch the earlier video series on patrata continuing his conversation with nirod baran sri aurobindo remarked no doubt if the guru cuts his connection with his disciples then this transfer of sins from the disciple to the guru cannot happen but then this would also mean that no work of spiritual upliftment gets done and the sadhaks are left to themselves without any support for this reason mother your sri aurobindo is referring to mother meera took up many sins of the disciples because she united herself with the sadhaks now such a transference of karma is not anything to be surprised about as sri aurobindo explains further such an interchange of forces between persons is actually very common whenever two people meet the interchange goes on in that way one contracts a disease from another without any infection by germs a disciple here was very conscious of what he was receiving from others but he didn't care to think about what he was passing on to them even without meeting there can be mutual effects even thought has power for good and evil bad thoughts may affect others that is why buddha used to emphasize right thinking so to conclude sri ramakrishna paramhansa the avatar did not get cancer due to past bad karma rather he got cancer because he purposely took upon himself the sins of his disciples because the great saint wanted to smoothen his disciples path and hasten their spiritual evolution this is the truth now having understood this a follow up question then arises which is that having taken on his disciples sins why did sri ramakrishna not use his immense yogic powers to cure himself of the throat cancer why did he have to go on suffering surely he could have used his tremendous yogic powers to restore his health so why didn't he we shall visit the answer to this question in the next video until then take a moment to join our daily code service on telegram and consider supporting the spiritual bee foundation so that misconceptions and superstitious beliefs that prevail in hindu society can be removed and the correct and genuine vedantic principles be imbibed by the people as always thanks for watching and we shall meet again in the next video